For this chapter, we will be talking about the lymphatic system, the lymphatic organs, and the related tissues. So our first slide goes over the lymphatic system and first discovers, or first mentions rather, what its main function is. And you can kind of think of the lymphatic system like a giant um, washing machine, the washing machine of our body. And what it does is it goes through the capillary, so it's um, kind of dispersed within the capillary bed, and it returns leaked fluids from the blood vessels back to the blood. Now, the parts of the lymphatic system are first a large network of lymphatic vessels, also referred to simply as the lymphatics. And these network of lymphatic vessels are going to run alongside veins all throughout circulation. Now the fluid that's found in those vessels is referred to as the lymph, which essentially is modified plasma. And also along the lymphatic vessels at strategic locations, there are small organs called lymph nodes. So these are basically small organs associated with the vessels. So the lymphoid organs and tissues what they do is they provide a structural basis of the immune system and they house specific immune cells, mainly phagocytic cells and lymphocytes. And these structures include the spleen, first of all, the thymus, tonsils, lymph nodes, and various other lymphoid tissue. So lymphoid or lymphatic tissue that's found in other organs. So the lymphatic system as mentioned before, it's this washing machine of our body, and it's going to return interstitial fluid and leaked plasma proteins that has leaked out of the capillaries, and it's going to return it to the blood. But before it does this, this fluid enters into the lymphatics, the lymphatic vessels, and there's about three liters per day that's actually removed for, and enters into the lymphatic system. So once this interstitial fluid enters the lymphatic system, it's referred to as lymph. So they're very similar. So let's look at the distribution and the structure of the lymphatic vessels. As I mentioned earlier, they sort of run alongside the veins and they're a one-way system that ensures lymph flow only towards the heart, which was just like you learn with the veins. So the lymph vessels include, first of all, lymphatic capillaries. So this would be the ones with the smallest diameter. And those lead into progressively larger vessels, which have a larger diameter. Now these lymphatic capillaries are very special. They're different than capillaries in the cardiovascular system. They have one specific characteristic referred to as blind end vessels that are absent from these specific areas. And um, those specific lymphatic capillaries are going to contain larger molecules and the lymph and venous flow, it's going to be dependent on the skeletal muscle as well as inspiration. So think venous return. So it's gonna be very similar to that and how it flows back towards the heart. So our next slide shows what a lymphatic capillary looks like. As I mentioned, it's blind. It has a small, it, it ends at one end here, as we can see. And there's epithelial cells, specific endothelial cells that are going to form mini valves and this serves to trap the fluid in the lymphatic capillary. So it's the fluid that's being removed from the capillary and let's take a more in um, zoomed in view here of the lymphatic capillaries. So the lymphatic capillaries are found in the tissue bed. We see the blood capillaries here and the lymphatic capillaries are here. So fluid that's in the interstitial fluid, it will enter into the lymphatic capillaries and begin its journey back towards the heart. 
So zooming back out, looking at the larger picture here, we can see now that the lymphatic capillaries are going to lead into larger vessels called lymphatic vessels, which have valves, just like the veins did, to ensure that the fluid now is going in one direction back towards the heart. Now, all along the trip back to the heart, there are lymph nodes, and we have thousands of lymph nodes in our body. Lymph nodes are the organs, small organs of the lymphatic system. They're small regions where immune cells are gonna hang out to attack bacteria microbes. And those vessels get larger and larger, leading into lymphatic trunks and then lymphatic ducts. And as you can see, it goes back towards the heart, just like the blood in the veins. So looking at the distribution and the structure of lymphatic vessels, just to uh, reiterate what I just mentioned, the lymphatic capillaries, they have these specialized endothelial cells that overlap to form one-way mini valves. And this allows the fluid to enter into the lymphatic capillary. Now there's also specialized lymphatic capillaries. These are called lacteals and they're present in the intestinal mucosa. So that's the inner lining of the intestines. And the lacteals are important to absorb digestive fat and also to deliver a fatty lymph called chyle, C-H-Y-L-E, to the blood. And remember these lymph cap lymphatic capillaries lead into larger and larger lymphatic vessels. And as they continue back towards the heart, they're going to form collateral channels called anastomoses, the term that you learned about in circulation. And those vessels progressively become larger. And some of the specific names of the vessels are named for the regions of the body that they're found. So the vessels lead into trunks. These are the larger lymphatic vessels. And they form by the collecting vessels, draining into large areas of the body. And as I mentioned, they're named for the general region that they're found. So those lymphatic trunks lead into two large lymphatic ducts. And there's, the two of them are called the right lymphatic duct and the thoracic duct. And it's important to remember that the right lymphatic duct drains fluid from the right upper arm and the right side of the head and thorax. And the thoracic duct drains lymph from the rest of the body. So let's look at a diagram that shows the major lymphatic ducts and the trunks. So the major lymphatic trunks, again, are named for the regions of the body. So we see the jugular trunks, first of all, the subclavian trunks, the bronchomediastinal trunk, the, lymph the lumbar trunk, and the intestinal trunk. And those trunks then lead into one of two ducts. On the right side is the right lymphatic duct, drains lymph from the right upper limb, and the right side of the head and thorax. Everywhere else, all of those trunks are going to lead into the thoracic duct. And all of these ducts, whether it be the right, lymph right lymphatic duct or the thoracic duct, are going to drain into subclavian veins. So we see the left subclavian vein here. It's the entrance point for the thoracic duct and the right subclavian vein is the entrance point for the right lymphatic duct. So this diagram is now showing where the lymph enters, what duct it goes into. So uh, this, everything that you see on the right side of this image, so we see this kind of light green color. So the right side of the head, the right thorax, and the right arm. If any lymph fluid that's collected from any of those lymphatic capillaries anywhere in that region is going to end up entering the right lymphatic duct and then anything from the left side of the body 
goes into the thoracic duct. On the other side of this image is showing lymphoid organs. Now lymphoid organs, there are two different types. The primary lymphoid organ is the initial place where the two different types of lymphocytes are produced. That would be the thymus and the red bone marrow. The secondary lymphoid organs are going to be areas of the body where there's large collections of lymph nodes specifically. And these are some of the different examples. The tonsils, spleen, Peyer's patch, and the appendix.